Beats. Uh, in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. Flying high, I emerge through the flames. Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back. Melanin, activate the name of Super Black. In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. Flying high, I emerge through the flames. Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back. Melanin, activate the name of Super Black. Uh, imagine that, a future that's super black. Long as your skin brown, your superpowers intact. What would your powers be? Just hope it ain't super whack. Spatial manipulation, create a portal that's black. Maybe just super speed, time travel to run it back. Or cheat manipulation to keep my spirit intact. As I encounter evils the world face, demons the world makes. I needed the world to stay. Rest in peace to Chad, what they killed all the Black Panthers. Told us white lies, I still marvel at black answers. Suits in DC, pray it lead to a civil war. It ain't no justice league. What's the need to be civil? For, propelled like the juggernaut, it's clear ain't no stopping this The world in grave danger, who can stop the apocalypse? They killed all the heroes, the new ones don't really care But if you need me, put your fist up in the air Yeah, in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back Melanin, activate the name, of super black In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames. Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back. Melanin, activate the name of Super Black. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Thursday. We getting y'all through the week once again. This is Blurred's Eye View. I'm your man on the wall, Chris Fury. If this is your first time here, thank you for tuning in. You won't be sorry. Show your love on the YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for past interviews, live shows like this, and interviews that you won't find anywhere else. Uh, but without further ado, let's get this show started. We got my second in command, Lady Mandalore. What's going on? Right, I'm looking extra greasy this evening, which is very perplexing. I don't know what is going on. <laughs> However, that just just means I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> means I'm hot. Well, you know, we, once we start getting some production dollars, we, we, we can we can take care of that. We we can okay, make that's. People in. Yeah, there you go. That's a little, yeah, it, it's the chocolate brown everybody likes to see. It is. It is. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm changing. I'm changing. Um, or was it shedding for the changing of the seasons? Ah, yes, the shedding yeah. of the seasons. Yes. The fall is upon us. Mm. Summer is no longer here. Uh, we've made it through an apocalyptic uh, summer, uh, or, or close enough, because uh, <laughs> uh, Lord, yeah, a couple of states was looking like it was the Walking Dead for a while. Uh, yeah. Smog in Canada and everything else. I don't know. Non sexy, as the French would say. Non sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would know about apocalyptic uh, backdrops except for our very own Grio the Horror? Lanny, the hey, oh. I love that that transition. That was tight. That was tight. <laughs> that was just nice. It's cute. Pretty. It's cute. It's that cool. was. It's good. <laughs> and and supposedly New York is supposed to get 80 and plus next week. That's what I heard. Who said? Why? Who said? I'm just letting y'all know. Listen, don't come over. in here. Don't come in here with all that noise. It may not be uh, over. Uh, uh, it's over. It's over. Yeah. Look. Already. <laughs> Already. <laughs> oh my God. In the wings, we got our very own engineer with with unsigned uh with insign uh Obi in the wings with him. <laughs> Black <Right>. Bart. <laughs> I was gonna mess up my whole intro. I was gonna say reporting live from God's hot plate where it's freaking hot. But <laughs> what's going on, everybody? Not me is always me. It's always the assassin that gets us. It was one or the other. But, <laughs> but what's going on? <sighs> Another day in paradise. See that? Look, right? Even even Obi was just like, "Yeah, what is going on?" Exactly. <laughs> no. look up like that. If, if that right, Kira wasn't muted. Lady wasn't muted. They just messed us all up, didn't they? <laughs> Not you throwing shade immediately, right? Immediately, and if you don't throw shade, sure. throw proper shade. Also, say that my internet is working. Okay, it was, <laughs> it was all here. He had the side. He still blame the baby. Blame the baby. Look, 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 this baby got attitude. <laughs> like I said, Obi's unsigned. He's he's one of the insigns. He's he's part of the crew now. Uh, <laughs> a very own ship's computer. We'll be watching the cinematic assassin. <laughs> oh man! So y'all know the Streamyard has the beta version of the app running, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the reason we didn't appear in our normal order 
is because right as Lainey was coming on screen, I was like, what this button do? Like, no. I yeah. I was like, oh, no. Because no, I seen him. He was backstage one minute. I'm like, where did he go? I'm like, all right. Well, now, Sparty. Just like that. He was gone. Pulled Don't oh. push that button. Yeah. Yep. Man. I got to start putting signs everywhere on the ship about stuff not to touch. <laughs> that part. That would help. <laughs> Don't touch this unless you have a suit on. It'll be in deep also. space. Don't know if y'all can tell, but two weeks with a uh, Coach Callier, you know I mean, my titties is titty in a little bit. Just oh, Nick oh. G. Negro. Okay, sir. I gonna, I gonna, I gonna, Are you ready to this milk? I mean, what, what, we, what we doing? Oh, my I was going to say the shoulders, and the, the shoulders and the traps are looking mighty sharper, sir. That is it, you know? Bees in the tra- bees in the trap. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm right behind you, Will. I got organic Chrissy. Up on deck. Oh, you got it. Uh, shout out to Organic Chrissy mm-hmm. and, and Hieroglyphics, by the way. Um, man, this is my last Ooh. drink for a long time. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh, By way of Cleveland now in Charlotte, that sister is really doing her thing out there, man. Mm-hmm. She's transforming lives and getting everybody and getting the, getting the blurred community healthy. So that's what's up. Right. That's what's going on. I got next. It's <laughs> <laughs> early. Show it's too late. <laughs> it's, it's too early, it's too late. Oh my god. Uh, we also have our special guest with us tonight. Oh, wait, uh, it's the boss. <laughs> it's the boss. <laughs> really, as you put stuff away, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's the boss. Uh, uh, co owner of Blurred Station and KDS Entertainment. We are a proud affiliates and press team for Blurred Station. Go check us out. Uh, show it, shine, sign up for the affinity program. Let's just get this man in here so we can hey. really get brass tacks what Blur Station is, what it means, and everything in between. Mm-hmm. Our very own Kevin J. Murphy. What's going on, Kevin? Hey. My people, my people, my people. <laughs> Children of Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> Children of Wakanda. <laughs> Will, there's something about your chest area that's just, I don't know. <laughs> I saw you, it wasn't quite the same. It's- Something. Oh my god. Something you know he's gonna run with it's that now. It's, 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 the stri- it's the stripes. It's the stripes. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's, it's like it's it's fashion, you know. I, I've listened to Edna Mode. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so she, pectoral she, power. Is problem. Just, <laughs> there's, a, there's a pectoral power that's just leaping out at you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just different. It's that's all I'm saying. Oh my What's god. Up, Thank you. <laughs> Kevin, um, you are co-founder of KDS Entertainment and Blur Station. Yes, that is accurate. That is very accurate. You have your hands in the Blur community in so many in so many fashions, uh, in so many ways. Let's let's start at the beginning. Yes, yes, let's do that. I your am, background. I am I am a I am like a blurred nearly out of the womb. I didn't really understand that for a very long time. But my but my mom taught me when I was like four years old before kindergarten. She taught me how to read using Spider Man comics. So she was she was a stay home mom, you know, doing her thing, and I was driving her crazy. But she was reading Spider Man, and she was just like, "Okay, sit down, and you're going you're going to learn to read. We're going we're going to make sure you're not illiterate using Spider Man." So uh, I've been a, I've been like speculative fiction has been my thing. Mm-hmm. forever and so writing was you know the the direction I started off in um ended up doing some um, independent comics and stuff like that you know during that phase I had the independent comic phase me and my co-founder Dion Knuckles shout out to Dion Knuckles who's probably one one of the most uh, accomplished artists working in the industry all over the industry today um and uh then uh because he's such a good brother when Hasbro toy group snatched him up he he dragged me along with him so uh he, he he made a he, he made a brother uh, gave some options to a brother so <laughs> hooked me up. Uh, ended up you know ended up writing at the Hasbro Fa- Fantasy Factory uh, where we started by creating uh, IPs intellectual properties and it was a lot of fun. Um, he was working on Star Wars and all this stuff and I was working on you know Wizards of the Coast really kind of honing my writing. Uh, so yeah you know it was it's it's been. It's been a thing. Then from there, you know, we, we made our, we trekked our way out to Hollywood. We got some, some development, some, some, you know, some option deals in Hollywood. We got some 
uh, distribution deals with Fox Four Kids and uh, Porsche Light Entertainment for some of our properties. So I've kind of been doing the Hollywood two step for a while, man. And, and now we've got some properties that are positioned really, really well. Some uh, some shows, some live action shows, and and I learned a lot of lessons in Hollywood trying to figure this out. And I realized that, you know what, black in Hollywood is not the best thing. It's, it's not. It's not the best thing. That. <laughs> that it's not. is so true. Um, so that, that leads to that leads to KDS Entertainment. So yeah. how did how did KDS Entertainment come about? So what Dion, Dion and I did was we kind of like we started leveraging the skills that we got from Hasbro, uh, you know, how to start properties and how to how to build them out, you know, so that they look a certain way, they feel a certain way, they, you know, from zero, literally. So we would start with zero. Shout out to our, my uh, mentor, Kevin Maurer, if you guys ever get a chance. For writers, any writer out there of speculative fiction, you need to go and check out Kevin Maurer, Meta Story. This dude, the way he, the way he conceives how to bring people into universes and build universes off the charts, just completely off the charts. So we took those skills and um, we were doing, we were kind of doing that together for producers in Hollywood. You know, people knew Dion's reputation much better than mine. I was, I was not as popular as Dion, trust me. I, but uh, he's working for groups like DreamWorks and uh, Fox and doing projects for NBC and for McFarland Toys. I mean, he's just working for everybody and dragging me along with him, you know, so, uh, but what we found was we had a certain way of building out our universes and our properties and our decks that other people really loved. I mean, they just love them. And you guys got to look at, I think you guys got to look at one or two of our decks. I'm not sure. We, we, I, guess I know, we I know one of them we did. I know yeah. which are one of them we did, yeah, which so. blew our minds. Uh, <laughs> I, I apologize, Captain, but we're, we're currently approaching yellow alert. All right, here we go. So, with that being said, (laughs) with that being said, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're going to talk to our guest, Kevin J. Murphy, about KDS Entertainment, Blurred Station, New Black Hollywood, the whole nine, right after this commercial break. (laughs) And here we go. Hey, I was eating. What commercial? Uh, Commercial break. I'll give you a commercial. There's a goddamn celestial in the ocean and no one is talking about this. What even is that? Spider-Man, a psychopath wielding powers he has no right to possess. Jameson, not now. Is this a Thanos thug showing up on CBT? Did Jesus come back and get stuck halfway through? How does nobody have answers on this? It has been sitting here ignored and untouched for months like a Christmas tree. We might as well hang ornaments on it. Read all 600 pages of the Sokovia Accords. Everybody got their nose up in Wakanda business. But nobody has answers on this? I don't even need like an official news report. Send a single TikTok star with a ship. How is nobody investigating this? What the fuck? This just in. Feeling groggy in the morning? Coffee just can't give you that pep in the step that you're looking for? Try Pop Starts for that great get up and go that adults need. Pop Starts has the vitamin and nutrients that only grown ups can partake in, and with flavors such as tossed salad and scrambled eggs, and Jack Daniels and Bud Light flavors to start your day or end it, there's nothing better to wake up to unless you count that depressing cubicle job. Well, anyway, try Pop Starts today. Pop Starts is not part of the Kellogg's Corporation. Pop Starts could give you diarrhea. Pop Starts are not found in your local grocery store. Back with our guest Kevin J. Murphy. That was dope. <laughs> so far, <laughs> yeah, he got that one. We're, we're tag team. Right. <laughs> he was a cameraman. I did the rest. <laughs> oh man, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> Christy says we had the best commercials ever. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> more to come. I think he's. I think he's muted. He might be muted, Kevin. 
I think no, he's good. No, he's okay. good. Can you hear? Or well, can he not hear us? Can you? Can I don't think you can hear us. Ah! Oh, he can't. Oh, uh, tell you uh, what, jump out, jump out, and jump back in if he can, or texting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that'll do it. Jump out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jump, out and jump back in. Jump out. <laughs> Let me see if he gets it in the message. Jump back in. <laughs> Not the charades. Not the Lord of mercy. <laughs> charades. Two words. Jump. <laughs> back in. No, that 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 would have been soldier boy right there, Will. Right. I would I would have guessed Frank that if he did that. Let's do the double dutch. Jump out, jump back in. It's just, just, just double dutch, and I was like, like Yeah, ready? We know, we know, <laughs> yeah. Other than that, why he's getting that together, other than that, um, we had a lot of crazy stuff that's been happening, right? Uh, the writer's <laughs> strike is over, our so. own and outside of our own, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, why we were pleasantly waiting, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that that Obi. <laughs> Obi knows what's going on. Um, we had obviously a, a, a strike, right? Mm-hmm. A strike, right? And it's finally over. Uh, the deal has been made. Uh, some details have been coming to surface. Thank you to Mark Bernard and, uh, for you know giving some details on what's been going on with this strike. Uh, now SAG and Afra Afra are going to meet Monday, I believe Monday, to kind of get their deal settled. Uh, there's still unions that's mm-hmm. looking to be built and talk about a lot of details of what's going on with the whole strike, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know the dynamics changed, right? Let's see if Kevin's back on. You working? Hey. Is it back? Is it back? So nope, nothing. Anything, huh? so, log, so log out and then log back in. Okay. Not, yeah. Let me try that. Um <clears throat> so not tonight, um, stream yard. Like pull it, get tighten up. It, it, it's always it's it's technology. Um, <laughs> he may have to crank it. Brian said he may have to crank up the computer. <laughs> he said he may have to crank up the computer. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 what that is. It, what's going on, Dion Diamond? Uh, are hating on blur station. Look at that! Look at that! Everybody, everybody loves our commercials. I guess, I guess, steak and cocaine is up. Uh-huh. It's coming up in soon. Uh, <laughs> get it, get it, this is, this is, he said, "This is Tubi from Thanks Street." Here. From Just Street. Get that line right now. Very Tubi. I'm mad. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway. there, the, 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 the strike it has affected a lot of stuff. You know, it, it, it started with the talk shows, and then anything that was. This is fall season. We would have been getting something at least now. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So the strikes are causing the studios to cut back for diversity hires and internships in Hollywood. I'm gonna I'm say hey, something say about later. that. They, later. They, later. They, they, they were definitely they had already fired a bunch of executives um, immediately after that affirmative action um, mm-hmm. uh, um, judgment came came down. Yep. This this is that was not about money. Them getting rid of all of us types. Um, was immediately because they knew they weren't they were going to not have as much backlash or we couldn't have as much of a leg to stand on. Much. So, yeah, that was. Um, it's not. It's not just the internships. It's not just. It's not just because of money. They it's because they, they can't. They just knew they could fire us and get away with it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all. Because that who is. said any? Who said that's anything awesome. since? Mm-hmm. No one has said anything since. There's no uproar. There's no cry, outcry. There's no, but what about and why? And this person was doing what? What was the reason? What was the reason for you to get Pretty rid of much. It's yeah, not no. money? Oh, and there was money. It was just basically they don't like us in positions. Mm-hmm. Of, oh, of, in, of implied of, of implied authority. Like nobody that was in those positions were doing any kind of shakeups that got them into the news. Pretty so much. what what were they really doing in the first place? Yeah, they got the job. <laughs> that Obi knows what it is. Out of the mouth of babes. Best. <laughs> yes. That's the new show. Obi oh. knows best. <laughs> hey, if you get us like that, hey, if you get us like that Ryan kid on YouTube, I will not complain. Listen. <laughs> Let's see. How you sound, how you sound Kevin? Fuck. Good. Good. Oh, there he is. Hey, what are you doing? All right, so 
we'll, we'll, we'll continue the conversation in the next segment. Uh, <laughs> so uh, back to Kevin and KDS and, and Blurred Station. How did KDS come about? How, what was the, the inception, the birth? Um, so me and Dion, uh, after Hasbro, we kind of started bouncing around doing our own thing. And Dion moved out to California. And we were still kind of working on our own little projects. But we made our way into doing decks for people like producers. Um, so, there, so there's this big barrier that every creator knows about. You know, there are like three or four real barriers to like getting your stuff out there. And so we were facing those same barriers. You know, one, of course, is money. But the other one is once you've got a project project in your hand is how do you get it to people? How do you get it into that room, you know, into the room where they make the decisions, the green light room, that area. And that's a barrier if you don't have representation and stuff like that. So what we figured was, and, you know, we're doing decks for producers out there, you know, for people from all kinds of different studios. And it's, we just decided one day, let, let's try something different instead of, taking the money from these executives who are these, these, these producers and what have you, let's, let's say, okay, we'll do the deck for you, but instead of paying us, walk us into the room or come aboard our next property. You know, we've got some other properties and, and, and let's strategically partner. Let's be, let's be partners on this thing. And so that sounded good to a couple of, of guys who are up and coming, who are now some players and they took us into the room. You know, they got us in front of like some studios and some some of those players who could get you into those rooms with the studios and with uh, and we, we were able to start pitching, you know, to distributors. And so we kind of kind of came together organically that way as KDS Entertainment. And we started building out our partnerships and our strategic partnerships with some real names that we have a chance to work with. You know, we got studio partners, like one of the oldest Hollywood studios. Uh, in existence, Gum Gamal Television, they, uh, Gamal, the guys who do Narcos, they were our first option. They optioned our first shows. So um, really, really cool. And then from there, we just kind of started really cranking it up. We, you know, you got to have content, you know, you got to have content, but content is not really king. king. We say that content is king, content is king. And this is what led, led the Blur Station. Content, KDS was doing content. We had content all over the place. But there were so many other barriers than just having, you know, really great content and being able to pitch it. We're in rooms where we're pitching black properties and there are no black people. There are no black executives. There, there are no people that look like us who, and when we, we were on development on some properties and they didn't understand why we were thinking the way we were thinking about how to develop these shows because we were the only black people in the room. They didn't even understand what code switching was. Mm. So we learned the hard way that there's more, there are more barriers than just not having the money to get it done or even not being able to get into the room. But when you get there, um, who are you in that space? You know, how, how are you represented in terms of as a creator in that space and, and how do they take you seriously? Do they take your stories actually seriously? Cause they, they think they understand what's acceptably black in terms of TV and film and entertainment. And that's what they're shooting for, that acceptably blackness. Uh, but that, that wasn't what we wanted, you know? Mm -hmm. That wasn't what we wanted. We wanted to tell some stories uh, that we understood, that spoke to us. Uh, I can't tell you guys how many times I use the word authenticity in development with a room full of, they were nice Napkin, people. But, Napkin Americans. <laughs> The, the non-melanated. The non-melanated. <laughs> Christ Gate Warriors. Yeah, the Night yeah. Demons. The Bleach. The Mayo okay. Sapiens. Yeah. Yeah. Mayo Sapiens. Uh, okay. so, so the we, Ashen. Yeah. The recipients <laughs> of chairs. <laughs> that. Mm. Wow. <laughs> How the, default. <laughs> the default. The <laughs> default. Specialist set colonization. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, it was one of those kinds of things where it, it, it became this organic thing. We had to make some decisions. You know, do we want to keep doing this this two step, or do we want to try to answer some of the, some of the questions in terms of the problems that we're facing? Man, not just us, but we have so many really really good friends and you know great creators and and creative community that's our circle. Not to mention the ones that are all that I'm meeting, like like Blurred's Eye View and. 
so they're facing the same things. And, and so KDS kind of like organically led to Blur Station. You know, our success with KDS kept pushing us to Blur Station. So here, here, here we are. Here, here we are with Blur Station. Yeah. So Blur Station, uh, w- which I've announced at the beginning of the show that we're proudly uh, uh, members of now and uh, uh, Affinity members, Press Corps. Uh, I'm running the voice acting division. <laughs> you know, I'm uh, going to find yeah. out. Uh, you know, and so there's yeah. a lot of things that's coming up, you know, and there's a lot of projects that have very great promise, number one, um, to see that this is a, a, a place where if you have a project that you're working on, if there's a show of any type of uh, uh, a genre dealing with, you know, horror or uh, a speculative fiction, adventure, you name it, comics, even, you know, this is in your person of color. This is the place you need to be, you know, mm-hmm. especially when you are trying to figure out how can I get this project out there? How can I get something that I'm building or writing or want to shoot out into the atmosphere? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Opportunity, that was really important for us. You know, opportunity is also a barrier, you know, that, that a lot, so many creators run into. I mean, because honestly, it's, it's not, it's, it's a distributor's world. It's, it's not, uh, it's, it's, their, it's, it's their business model that makes them the 500-pound the gorilla. They're the ones, you know, because there are so many creators, but there are so few really monetized distribution models out there, platforms out there. I mean, everybody's in line trying to get their stuff onto those same four or five platforms. And, mm-hmm. and, and of course, network television. And then, of course, some cable television. But there are only so many shows that happen. There's only so much anime that gets done every year. There are only so many slots. And we are generally not centered in those pra- in those projects. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we're hero support. We're the guys, you know, that you'll see. I just saw the Kerry Washington uh, was being interviewed, and she said that she had gotten tired of being uh, the white, uh, the white protagonist's best friend. That was her. Mm-hmm. That's what she had mm-hmm. been Last for dance. years. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody always at the center. Who's the the little little Caucasian girl who uh, who the whole kingdom is depending on? You know, you've seen that uh, a, a zillion times in the fantasy mm-hmm. world. Of course, you got to protect the little empress and the princess. Um, where's the, where's the little sister who? who all the knights will go and die for in the fantasy world. Where, where's she yeah. at? You know, where, where's the where's the little girl who's mm-hmm. as smart as Tony Stark is, but she's hiding in the ghetto, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. Hiding her brilliance. Mm-hmm. It's funny, we were pitching, <laughs> guys do. So we were pitching one of those, one of our shows with that character. And we said, well, she's the smartest person in the world. And the, the white executive stopped us and said, no, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Why does that, that not surprise me? Oh, wow. I I Excuse me. Word? Huh? What? Well, why would she be in the ghetto if she's the smartest person in the world? Oh, the- my God! All and right. There, you and know there's what? The, and there's the disconnect. <laughs> right. Exactly. There's the disconnect. We, we that is what we call not living the opportunity. Like I don't get that. Yeah. yeah, that was one of those reality checks for us in development where we were like, okay. Uh, no, we're, we're willing to say that she's one of the top nines in the world, but not the smartest. I was like, but if she was Tony, you know, nine-year-old Tony Stark, that wouldn't be a problem. Well, that makes sense. Like, oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to I'm 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 be quiet. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> Wait a minute. Nah, I'm a, I'm a, nah, Captain, nah, Captain, I'm a, Captain says you can nah, fire him. Nah, we don't oh, we 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 lose some subscribers just because <laughs> radicalism... <laughs> It's a little. It's a little bit too early in the night. I, I, a couple more glasses of wine. I might get loose. But yeah, no. On the strength of everything, that motherfucker right there. Okay? Yeah. Mm. yeah. She's, in other words, Lady Mandalore is is on Tombstone vibes right now. She's like, oh, um, scorched earth. <laughs> it's scorched earth. Yeah. So we guys, wow. we, um, we just shook our heads. We're like, hey, get her on the ship. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's really, um, it's, it's a, I mean, one of the things we learned is when you see these properties that are black themed or black centric properties out there, remember, they've gone through a whole lot of vetting to determine whether they are acceptably black or not. So, 
mm-hmm. that, you know, we, when we were pitching, I think we pitched to only, in all the pitches we've done, we've only pitched to one person of color, period. Mm-hmm. All the pitches that we've done. And that was a, a beautiful young lady. She was an Asian lady, but not one black person took. Well, one, one. And that was, um, shout out to Delise James at uh, Judge Mathis. We love you, Delise. Wow. All right. Uh, one. <laughs> one in our entire career. One. So we, we couldn't, we, we knew we couldn't thrive in that space. Not the way we wanted to. So. And see, and that, like, like you saying, Demetrius, it's one, and we need more, right? Uh, which, which is, pro- which is why Blur Station and KDS's entertainment is important for us, you know. And Go just ahead. to give perspective, how long have you been doing this, sir? Um, so KDS Entertainment is five years now, but my Your career, career, my career stretches back almost twenty. See. Not that. Mm-hmm. Wait, what are we? <laughs> Wait, mm. not you talking about the, the year 2000 having to do and do it. No, okay. The word she said it. Still yes. has one. Yeah, I, I started, no. I was writing and, you know, trying to get into the writing, that writing space for, you know, right out of high school and college. And that was really hard. It was really, 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 really hard for uh, Black comic creators who were not independent to try to get into those spaces for a very long time. Because, you know, the demographic for you know, for basically for comics for very, very many years, the one, the only one that they paid attention to was the white males 14 to, to 39. That was the only real demographic they cared about for comics. And so that was the one that they were angling for. And those were the writers, you know, so they, they were perfectly happy to have anybody write for comic characters of color. You know, of course, Sweet Christmas, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I got, I kind of got in trouble when I called him on the carpet for that. Uh, oh. mm-hmm. Mm. Now you get to create strong <laughs> carpets and say the same thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, like, talking about a convention, I was like, no Negro has ever seen a sweet Christmas. <laughs> like, say, what, say what you really wanted to say. Right, hold up. I mean, hold up. you know, there's things, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. there, there are things. There so, jeez. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The yeah. Is, uh, this is why. And I'm glad he mentioned the way McDuffie. Um, it's it's the reason why Milestone Comics exists, or Milestone Media, which is not what is now known as. Mm-hmm. And even when it in its inception, when it was in its first infancy, seeing those stories being told, they weren't ready. They no, the- they, they there was covers. They weren't ready. The mm-hmm. the general public wasn't ready, but us as the community. We were like, Let's go. What, yeah, mm-hmm. what's what's wrong with that? You, yeah, you, you know, I was about escapism, and it still is. But even now, in the in its current run, it's touching on issues. It's you know, and and they're talking about things that matter. And there's just there it is. Yep, he knows what Demetrius knows what I'm talking about. Blood Syndicate. It's it's That's all there. Absolutely, yep. it's all there. So. We just need that. We need stuff like Blurred Station. We need those products. Like, there's a project you're currently working on with uh, Jarrell Patton. Oh, yeah. The Undead Horizon. Fantastic show concept. Fantastic show concept. Actually, the first show, uh, live action show that was not a KDS show uh, that we got first right of refusal on with Jarrell Patton. And his incredible daughter, Dakota. Okay. So this is a six-year-old child. Now, when I was six, I was eating eating paste. And (laughs) (laughs) the stuff I was doing at six years old was just, this child is doing Hollywood-level makeup. She's a genius. And she's been doing it since she was four years old. And, you know, of course, she's doing it on her dad and and her sisters. But it's just so dope. And so... Jarrell created a, a, a show concept, an IP, uh, based on some of the concepts that she had put together for zombies and what have you. But the, but it was so cool. I was like, yeah, we, we got to grab these guys because what's going to happen is somebody going somebody's going to grab them. I, I, you know, I know that for sure. So we grabbed we grabbed them and offered them a first writer refusal, and they jumped on board. And so the show's in development, and we want to get that show out there. It is. 
you know, it is a fantastic show concept. So they've signed a board and they're uh, affiliates as well. And we are trying to get people to support them so that this show can get done. Cause that's where we're at guys. I mean, it's not the content, you know, the content is there. It's distribution. Distribution is king. So we can stay with the metaphor of, you know, the chessboard. Everybody wants to be the queen. Everybody, everyone, everybody thinks, you know, the queen is so dangerous, but the queen is only dangerous when the king is secure. And so that's how I see, that's how I see distribution and content. Con distribution is the king. You got to have distribution or you're out there trying to sell your content, you know, at dollar stores in front of Kroger or something like that. You can, you can build this incredible content and all of the distribution partners that you want will tell, might tell you, no, nah, we don't like it. Then what do you do? You know, where do you go? You're, you, you got to go independent. You have to figure out how to monetize it. But if you've got distribution locked in in a space where you can monetize your stuff and with an audience, you know, that's already built in that get a chance to view it and get a chance to share it and get a chance uh, and get a chance to comment on it with with press who are reviewing it and talking about it in one space and you get the opportunity um, you being black is not a disadvantage, it's in fact an opportunity. Because now we know that you know how to center your, your characters and we know that you can write from a place or you can create from a place of real authenticity about who we are, our stories, our experiences. Now that's a plus for you as a creator as opposed to it being a barrier, a challenge. Uh, when you have a space like, uh, like Blur Station, when you have that, when you have distribution, then the creator, the queen can run crazy when the king is secure. She can run all over the board, just tripping all over people, kicking them in the face, <laughs> doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> distribution is content is queen. Uh, so that's something that I think that, that Blurred Station addresses. And we try to go with the whole spectrum, but we've got to get people on board. You know, mm -hmm. we, we've got to get people. We've got to start talking like televangelists. You know, we need yeah. you. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. we need you. To oh, you got to you got to hit them. You got to take this holy water and just Come on. just sprinkle it on you. you, you gotta, we need you. We can't do it without you. You know what? Everybody watch Dragon Ball. Come on. Let's not play. <laughs> what, what did Goku say? He said, lend me your energy. Come on, son. For this spirit bomb, you I don't just know. watched that this morning. <laughs> That's I'm why I'm we it. need I'm you. <laughs> Will feels it's... it in his fingers. Come on. <laughs> it's feeling it in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna we say need, pass the plate. We need the care bear stick. The we need the care bear. bear. <laughs> 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 the care <laughs> Lend us your Ooh. energy. No, it's in all Lend seriousness. Us. It's it's a great thing, and I'm we're glad to be a part of it. And it's just something that needs to be done because I can't tell you how many times we've heard the conversation or heard a gripe about we don't see enough of us. We don't see enough of us on screen. We don't see enough of us in in a book. We don't see we don't see us. Period. And they're, they're, if you don't do something, you're always going to complain about it. And this is why it has to be done. It has to be done. And I mean, look at look at, and I can't help but keep bringing it up. But look at the success that the Blackening brought. Look at the success of Black Panther. You know, uh, Blackening cost what five million to make, made fifteen. Yeah, they they know it's there. That's yeah. the key. They know that we will come out and spend our money on properties that are centering us. They know it. Mm -hmm. uh, we in our presentation we cite a number of articles that show that there that Hollywood passes on 10 billion dollars a year rather than adding black folk at the center of just some of the stuff you know a, a higher percentage of, of the things and shout out to shout out to uh, Hellspawn to Demetrius you know uh, Demetrius Holt that brother will take these statistics that there is no blur station without Hellspawn playing, period. You know, without Demetrius doing what he's doing, without him grabbing a hold of this message and driving it home and being the boots on the ground and working like a 
And more importantly, even than that, being that first person that jumped from the community that jumped into the pool with us, he jumped in and he brought all his credibility with him. And I brother got to give him, I got to give him his flowers because credibility has also been one of our issues that we're facing. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that the blur community, you guys are incredible creators. The blur community is way deeper than I thought. It is so deep. It is so dope. It is way better. Demetrius and blurred's eye view and, and, uh, and Lonzo Star and Brian Wycliffe at, 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 uh, at Wingless and Montrez and all these incredible, incredible creators. Y'all, Chauncey Dickens, y'all are just we are dope. The, we're the underground, man. We, man, we are is, the underground. It is a, it is an underground <laughs> full of gold. I mean, it is crazy gold. It's where all the good stuff is at, too. You know? so it's, <laughs> it is. Uh, you know, and then of course the people who've, who've broken through who are on our side, like Phil But Bute at uh, at Nine B. You know, shout out to Nine B. Nine B is just just dope. They will, they are bringing it. You know, and so they represent that evolution, that next step for people that I'm creating, you know, creating with. And Blur Station is going to give, you know, a stage to. Um, but the Blur community has been sold a bunch of snake oil, and and for so long that what we're experiencing is, you know, a certain kind of reticence of, mm -hmm. of to jump in, you know, and we don't want that to keep people from taking and, and getting some of the benefits that Blur Station is offering. We're not just asking people, you know, we're not Tyler Perrying and it's great to have black owned and Byron Allen, great to have black owned, great, great. But we want to give some of that ownership to the people who participate, you know, Tyler ain't giving y'all no ownership. Cough. 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 They're they're dancing to that same tune. They're acting like Hollywood. You know, we want to move into this other space where, you know, we have the power to green light our own thing. I love Shonda. And for her $350 million that she got from Netflix, she still got a pitch to Netflix. Ooh, yeah. They still gotta say yes or no. I'm to sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he mentions that's crazy. Okay. There was okay. I, there was a time, and I'm glad you brought all of this up because there was a time during the late 80s, early 90s, Robert Townsend and Keenan Ivory Wayans and that entire crew, they were actually making moves. They were like the new black yeah, rat pack. They were. Mm -hmm. they were. Like there, there's group, there's a group of people that came out of that camp that made major differences. But look where they had to make those differences at and you know and they got shut down they did they got shut down so now here we are umpteen years later and we're 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 trying a different method we we know we got the content that ain't the issue nope. <laughs> the issue is not what we can think of we we have tons of 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 ideas the issue is how do we get it out there? And like you mentioned, the distribution, and that was the key is to get it out there. And now you look at now it's needing the support. And like you said, the blur community has been fed snake, snake oil. You know, there is that hesitancy and, you know, and they don't, they're not sure like, uh, how do we do that? So putting people like myself and, and the rest of the crew and, and hell spawn and Nick's over at do you speak geek and nine B these guys being attached to this thing saying, Hey, yo, if we trust it, Shout out to Crazy Eight and Candy B. Absolutely, you know, Absolutely. and those are my people. When I say, "Oh, mm -hmm. well, they're in it," and then Demetrius, I'm sold. <laughs> I say, "Oh, I'm like, sold." Look, look, that's the we don't do bullshit crew. Like, yeah. all, if you need, if you have any <laughs> concerns or qualms, that's the receipt kings and queens right yeah. there. And uh, when I'm like, I'm like, "Oh, these are my people already." I already know. I, I just sign me up. Let's let's do it. You know yeah. and knowing that they're a part of something and now that we're a part of something that's out here trying to make this difference will make this difference <clears throat> rephrase <laughs> and and it's so it's it's really so cool because you mentioned brandy and, and crazy eight these guys 
came, you know, they were, they were recommended to us and we sat down and the stuff they were pitching was just off the charts. You know, I've, I've been pitching for years and this stuff is right here in the community. I mean, I grabbed you know, Brandy. She, she hit us with one of the projects. If I do one project for Blurt Station, it's going to be Brandy's project. If I only get a chance to do one, it's got to be that one because it's game changing, the one that she, she pitched. But then eight comes along and he understands that there's this other layer here. There for <laughs> artists, the music, all of our projects need music, all of them. You know, have you guys ever listened? Have you ever watched those videos where they show the video or show the clip with the music and without the music? You guys ever watched mm -hmm. those? Yeah. yeah. It, it just, it's just horrific. So every project that we're doing is going to have music associated with it. Hence, we want to build a stable of musicians from the blurred community, from the nerdcore community, from the black musician community, that's stable. And we have made a commitment to only use those guys for year one on all of our projects that we're going to be doing, all of our scripted. So we want, the opportunities are, are there. I mean, we just have to get this thing built. That's all, we just got to get it built. And when we have it built, we'll have a platform, we'll have an audience, we'll have production dollars, and we'll have distribution. Uh, on top of that, we'll have marketing, we'll have press. Uh, it's all there. The, the plan is solid. And um, our job now is to deliver. It, it, the only way I can see around getting around that whole snake oil trauma is deliver. You know, do what we say we're going to do. Be who we say we are. If we can deliver, oh, all of it changes then because, you know, everybody can look backwards and go, I wish I, I wish I'd have bought some stock in such and such, you know, well, <laughs> this is it. This is this is the moment. <laughs> Dude, don't worry, Demetrius, all Tafari had to do was throw it out there. Trust me. Uh, give me give me to the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Because he, so, uh, and I say, I say that for this reason. Uh, me and Kevin, when we first started, you know, discussing how Blurred's Eye View was going to come on board and everything else, and he was pitching an idea to me. He was telling me about a, one of these projects that they were working on, and he was like, "It's this anthology series, blah 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 blah," and and they couldn't think of a name, and I just said, "Call it this, but spell it this way," and first he was just like. That's good. Uh, <laughs> it don't take me long. It really don't. And it, the brain just doesn't shut off. It, and nor do I want it to. And because I, I just don't, I don't need it to shut off. It's like it's just part of my part of my issue. Uh, <laughs> it yes, works. So, so, so go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I I have a question. So I'm yeah. trying to think as somebody that that hasn't been sold on this, and it's. It's coming from a place of, of trying to be as honest and transparent for Blurred Station and for us as possible because I'm all about trust. What, when, number one, when do you expect to have the streaming platform up for people to start watching things on? So the way our plan works right now, we're in round one. Round one is our first funding round. Um, now, to be clear, we don't have the same kind of equity funding rounds that you'll see for groups like Fanbase and for Legion M and for some who shall be nameless, some other groups shall be nameless. I'll uh, put it in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is why I'll she's put, my I'll second. When, when she knows I have to holster the weapon, <laughs> she goes ahead and pulls it. Those, those who shall mm -hmm. not be named. Oh, it's, oh, it's going to be safe. Oh yeah, not by us, but it's gonna be said. She's like, she's I'm more fine. like, she's more like Lady Mandalore is like, don't worry, Captain, I got it. I, I got it. it. I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> she <laughs> likes to fight. <laughs> in our in our funding round for the way we're doing this, it's it's we what we need is we need participation, just like everybody else in a certain way. Um, but right now, it's all con everything that we're doing is contingent on whether or not and how far we get in terms of subscriptions. You know, so the goal is to reach our subscription levels and then go right from the end of October ish into pre-production for a bunch of stuff. And that's that's the real the real issue. When you're really moving forward to do this stuff, you march through pre-production, development, the whole nine yards. You get it. You get through it. 
and when you're doing when you're really doing it there's a trail of breadcrumbs that you can show that you're doing it you know it's not just mm -hmm. not just talking it's showing and telling so what we what we plan on doing is as we start getting into production we want to launch the platform in january the question is how much content will we have at that exact moment when we launch right. but we're doing a number of things that we'll be able to start dropping content for we have an entire comic series that we want to make sure that our, that's on the uh, on the platform and the comics specifically point to the universes of the live action and animated properties that are coming so what we're doing is we're robert kirk Kirkman in, you know, these things. So you get Invincible, Walking Dead, things exactly. in, in that in that pattern. Exactly. <laughs> so you'll see some of the shows that are coming in comic form and you'll get to, you know, start in on their those universes. So the comics will start dropping right away uh, on the platform in January and hopefully um, some of our what's called local content. So our guy, Xavier Byers, shout out to him who from um, from KBS, who's an executive at Netflix right now. He's mm -hmm. an advisor for us. And he he sat me down. And he was like, Kevin, what we need to do is make sure that you have OTT content, which is the over the top streaming stuff with, that people focus, really focus on. But because of the blurred community is what you what you want to engage. You need to you need to sew into the blurred community with what's called local content. So local content is more of what you guys do. You guys are a part of our local content strategy, Blur, uh, Blurred's Eye View, where you're doing news, you're doing interest, you're, you're producing things that are almost extant right away, you know, live streaming, that kind of stuff. So I sat out with, uh, with Demetrius Holt, and he and I were discussing it. He came up with a show that is just a crazy, it's called Issue Number One. So issue number one, which is one of the shows we want to launch right away, is it takes into account the, the creator community in the comic space. What is the issue number one that they have to experience, that they experience in terms of the barriers that keep them from doing their first issue? Well, it's money generally. It's generally money. So what we want to do with issue number one is we want to give them those dollars and then watch, go along with them while they're publishing their first issue, their issue number one. So we want to replace Kickstarter and then we're going to follow them along as they're building their first issue where, and, and that's local content. And then we'll option that issue or that, that content, that content will option it. It'll be on Blur Station. We'll option the actual um, show concept uh, or the comic concept and we'll make it into potentially an animated or live action show as well. But we're going to do that for four different creators of comics and give them an opportunity to have their, their comics done. And we watch them do it. You know, watch the ups, watch the downs, uh, the challenges that come with the deadlines that we will set, those kinds of things. So that's one of the shows that we anticipate being on there too, Lady Mandamore. So it'll be, it'll be some of that stuff while we're working towards the animated properties, which will take a little bit longer because they're animated. And that takes for animation is the yeah. devil, but it's mm -hmm. lovely when it's done. It is true. <laughs> so, Kaz, Kaz Famous, the musical, has a question. Interesting uh, kind of ideas. Issue one sounds dope. How does one submit their material to Blurred Station? Um, so, first things first, um, don't come to the cookout and just bring Tupperware. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't if, do that. If, if, if you know, you know. Exactly. <laughs> If you want to, if you want the, if you want to take a plate home with you, <laughs> then you need to bring a dish, mm -hmm. right? Ice don't count. Plain and simple. Ice, huh? ice, paper plates, napkins, and that <laughs> stuff that don't count. We need something of substance. If you want the community to bless you, then you got to be a blessing to the community, mm -hmm. right? If we're, if we're going to stay with it, you got to, you got to sow into the community. So that's the first thing that we're asking is we're not taking pitches from projects that are not for, well, from creators who are not in the community. We're taking care of our own first. So, and what, when, when I said that to Chris Fury and he said that to Blurred Eye View, they were like, okay, sure, dope. And they all moved, they all just jumped, they jumped in with us. 
Mm-hmm. So now they're at the front of the line. Now they have their own space. They have their own show. They are, and that's what we promise to do. We literally promise to reward leaps of faith any way we possibly can. So take the leap of faith with us, jump in, and then for then we'll what we'll do is we'll make you know make it apparent who you need to start talking to to take pitches. So for issue number one, you're gonna want to reach out to uh uh, to Chauncey at uh, Blurred's Eye View, excuse me, at um, I Speak Geek, or Do You Speak Geek? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so Chauncey's going to be one of the producers. And so Chauncey's starting to, uh, he's literally starting to organize that. Um, if it for, if it's for something else, once you join, then you'll have access to us. And we'll start setting you up. We'll start looking at, at your stuff and let you know when we're going to be taking pitches specifically. Cool. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, we're going to come back, talk a little bit more about that. And then we're going to get into our news breaks and uh, talk about what's going on over there. We'll be right back. Yeah. Welcome back to Fast Money, y'all. We're getting ready to finish up the game. And now your teammate done scored enough points. I think you just need to get one answer right to win. You ready? Ready. Okay. Name a podcast. Blurred's Eye View. Who should have won that Oscar? Angela Bassett. Who did win the Oscar? Don't give a damn. Name a cartoon. Ed and Eddie. Name a guest from question one. Carl Jones. All right, that did it. Congratulations, you won the game. Hellspawn cosplay. No, we only need a one name. Hieroglyphics. You can stop now. Josh Evans. Chase Bowling. Josh Brown. <laughs> Y'all Talk cut more. the commercial. He's going to be Charlie out for a while. Blurred's Eye View. Be sure to peep the podcast on all platforms or stream every episode on Always Press Record TV. APR TV now downloadable on Amazon and Roku. APR TV, the power of podcasting in the palm of your hand. Get it today. Running low on energy, long days and even longer nights, tired of all the other energy drinks and bars promise you a lot and never delivering, need to make it through work, but want a product that can keep up with your busy lifestyle? Want no longer? Try Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls. The balls that are so smooth and with a load of nutrients and vitamins to really get you up and bouncing off the walls. Made with all natural ingredients and healthy junk to satisfy even the pickiest eater. Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls are sold everywhere where you buy your junk. And now for those who want that extra kick in the butt, comes Chef's Heavy Duty Chocolate Salty Balls with 120% more caffeine than the leading brand. Disclaimer, this product has not been approved by the FDA or World Health Association. Warning, this product is not intended for consumption by children, elderly people, or women who are pregnant, or may become pregnant. You might even get pregnant. Got a few more minutes. We talk to our guest, Kevin Murphy of Blurred Station and KDS Entertainment. Let me get up there and get over there and let's switch the peoples around. Uh oh, he's out again. <laughs> his, his, sound is out again. his sound is out again. Okay, he's gonna jump back in. Um extent. all right, there we go. Uh technology. God damn it. Don't you love it? Stream y'all is trying to hold us down. Them damn scrolls! No. Um, <laughs> you pimped us, Fury. Finally, it's not me. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I'll never get old. <laughs> How you sound over there, Kevin? I'm good now. I'm Here good. it is. <laughs> I'm good. Okay. So, we, before we get into our news our news segment, uh, Tell people how they can join up the Blur Station. Let's start there. Yeah, so www.blurstation.com. You want to go there. Lots of information there. I mean, I know that this seems like it's really complicated. It's really not complicated. It's not all that complicated. It's a lot of moving parts because we're doing a lot of things. Go there. You can select 
from any hit the join button once you once you're happy about what you see hit the join button you'll be able to select from any number of uh affiliates who are actually asking their uh subscribers and asking their followers to come aboard uh under them and they will you know some are giving away some extra special stuff on top of what they get from blur station some affiliates are doing that some some are just saying you know come and join the party with us you know but if you you want to do that then you can fill it out fill out the little form it's a really a quick little form uh we'll start sending you stuff and uh 1099 a month for 36 months gets you your full your full formed affinity membership affinity this us together it's our space it's our thing it's uh, it's what binds us together it's like the force yes and uh then after we get those subscribers in place, uh, what, what ultimately happens is we move from round one into uh, pre-production. Uh, and that's when we start opening up the doors for a lot more in terms of pitching uh, concepts. We'll start showing up more at black conventions. You know, when you've got you know, blurred and powerful on, on your team, black conventions are a thing for us. That's gonna absolutely be a thing for us. We want them to thrive. So we're going to be doing a lot of pitching for our shows uh, or taking pitches at the black conventions. Uh, same with um, Blurred's Eye View. Blurred's Eye View and Chris Fury and that, that crew are, is going to be helping us cultivate our voice actors. So that's going to be something that, you know, if you want to be a voice actor on some of our animated properties, which we've got some of them lined up, you're going to want to talk to Chris Fury and uh, Blurred's Eye View, and they're going to be able to direct you into that space. But just go. Uh, and, you know, again, it's a lot of information. It seems like scroll down to where the membership information is. The entire presentation is right there. You can download it and look it over. And it has the whole strategy. Our strategy will work. We just need people to lock shields with us like the Spartans. Lock shields. You know, you can mess some stuff up if you lock them shields up. You know here's, here's, here's oh. that. Here's that. This is all you do. This is all you do. You go to blurstation.com if you can hear me. <laughs> um, yes. You go, you mm. go to now and see, you see all of us there. You mess up there now. You can just go to Blur's Eye View. You can pick any of them and you just select because guess what? The entire crew was there. Hey. Well, you can pick as any yeah. of us. Look mm -hmm. here. So yeah. you just go pick pick any other crew, join up, and uh, not only that that's not only is that the best part of it, the the really the the the, the icing on the cake, the the cherry on top. After you pay your ten ninety nine throughout the thirty six months, you own a piece. You own a piece. Mm -hmm. You own a piece. So you those other streaming services cannot offer you that. Yeah, and it's running out. Honestly, because it's yeah. only a certain number that we're going to give that affinity membership equity to, you know. So at some point, we're we're closing the doors on equity because we have to. There's only so many only so many spots. I mean, spots. Get off your ass and go over there. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> and they're running out. If if y'all could please, that's going to only grow. In wealth, <laughs> I just I'm I'm begging y'all, please get get some money and get some money. That's it. That's all. We're not asking for a lot. We're no. not asking. We're not asking. We're not. We're not asking for your check. We're just merely asking for the fourteen piece. We're asking for a number seven. Oh, we're appreciate. asking for a Rudy Tutti fresh and fruity. That's all. Oh, we're asking for. I was gonna say you can get a Big Mac meal and have change left over to just. So, I mean, I mean, you can it's, still go to Denny's after this. That's all we say. That's facts. It's true. It's true. And uh, this is where you buy in. This is where you buy in. Take the leap of faith. Jump in there with us because the, the thing that we don't want is we don't want this opportunity to go away. Right. Yeah. We just don't. We don't want that. But you, you jump in. These guys, when you jump in, we will deliver. We promise that. Mm -hmm. We will deliver. Just, I've been paying for Netflix since they sent out DVDs. Nothing to show for it, hey. unless you kept <laughs> unless you kept said see, they say, unless you kept said DVDs. You sit back empty envelopes. Look, mm -hmm. I gladly paid for Justice League, uh, the animated series. I, I kept it. I'm not gonna lie. 
I consciously kept that on purpose. I was like, I'll pay for it. Screw it. I'm about to say, um, yeah, pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true to limitation. Uh, so <laughs> Trey Lawson says, how does equity work for a regular member? Uh, so equity works for a re regular member. What we're doing is we're going to be putting uh, 10% of the company uh, and dividing that 10% of the company with the affinity members. So they'll get their share of 10% of the company. Now, unlike what you'll find in a number of equity scenarios, i.e. our comps, what we have which is like fan base and uh, Legion M. Look those guys up. Look up Legion yeah. M in particular. They're very much a comp for us. Um, they started with zero and, you know, their reputations, no content, no nothing. And then 40,000 uh, equity members later, they've got themselves a full blown film company, you know, and they've been doing it for a number of years now. And that's our comp. However, for our affinity members, we won't do them the way Legion M does. Legion M doesn't pay any dividends. Legion M, all of the gains for their equity members are what are called paper gains. That means that the stock gets more and more valuable, but it's only on paper because they don't give any dividends or awards out to their stockholders. The only time they'll get anything, it's, it's generally the case in these kinds of, of equity kind of like builds is if you get acquired, let's say, let's say BET says, that's enough of that young Negroes, we're gonna give you $2 billion and we're gonna acquire you. Then you get your piece of the puzzle. You get your on the way out the door. Or if you go um, public, you go public and now um, it's the company's worth billions of dollars and then your, your stock matures in that way. But those are options for us. But we also know that if we just keep growing, we can give dividends on the stock that we have. We can actually pay you, the stockholder, a portion of, our, of the profits of the company into perpetuity. So as long as we're growing, you don't have to sell your stock to start making some money with us in our model. We get to our, we hit our benchmarks, then we start paying dividends to the stockholders. But then you can hold, you can hold on to it. If we hit our top benchmarks, then you make, you're actually making some good money holding on to the stock. So hope that answers y'all's questions. Uh, so this next piece, we're getting into our news bites uh, to answer uh, my very own assassin's question. He says, uh, we got to stop confessing crime, conf confessing crimes on the show. It's not a crime if I paid for it. No. <laughs> I, I responded to that, that the statute of limitations has passed for me. That, and that too. They they don't care. There's no more oh. red boxes. Than that, than that. So I, it's, I own it by outright. I mean, I, uh, I'm not knocking on my door anytime soon. Yeah. I don't know what no anybody's talking about. Door. I don't see anybody. It's too large for that. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna say they're scared to even be on his doorstep, but you know that too. No, anyway, here's our news part portion of the show. All right, so as we know, the the writers' strike is over; they're back to work. But are the actors next? So. Uh, there we like I said, Mark Bernard, who's been on the show before, he actually put up the details of the writers' contracts, so so to speak, on what's being done and what and how everything is looking. So they are currently back to work now. Like the, I think the soonest your thing you're going to see is Monday, and that's in the talk shows. Mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing your Jimmy Kimmel's and your Jimmy Fallon's and your Stephen Colbert's. You know, okay, that so, one. We so yeah, I was gonna say yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's was a little dry at first. We 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 recovered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they should show anybody. Hey. So uh now with the writers is coming in play, uh, and this has this has been strike season. This has literally been strike season. Mm -hmm. Um it, it started with the writers, then the actors, and then the special effects joined, and then they and it's a good thing to see because we talked about it briefly earlier. It's a good thing to see because when you're when you're not behind the scenes, you don't know what actually is going on. You don't know that the residuals are really trash in this day and age. You don't know that the special effects or or some of these other I don't want to say lower tier jobs, but the people that's really working behind the scenes have no union. 
Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> you, you, like we had no clue, you know. So finding out these things and finding out like the the dirt and the grime that's going on, with the exception of the Ninja Turtles film, because Seth Rogen said, "Oh no, our effects artists took days off." <laughs> He's mm-hmm. like, "We're we're not a sweatshop." <laughs> it was like, "Good lord." And and that and that film still came out great. So mm-hmm. it's good to see that. It's good to see that. Yeah. She says healthcare workers and, and Cali going on strike next week. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> healthcare oh, auto, workers on auto yeah. union uh union work. Auto union workers union. are all stay yeah. more stay more walking off the job by the day. Oh, the video what's, game. Uh, uh, in, yep. That's my Mark, Mark, what's going on, Mark Cooper? Mark Cooper, I'm gonna shoot you a message after the show. Uh, that, <laughs> I'm gonna hot tap him in. I'm gonna tap him oh, wait, in. No, hot, hey. hot strike summer. Hot strike summer. <laughs> hot strike summer. Let's get let's let's get Meg on that. Um, uh, <laughs> make that the new anthem. Uh, <laughs> so I have I have been talking to eight. I, I have been talking to eight. Eight should be coming on in a in a in a couple uh, couple Ooh. shows. Is that new that new that new uh, single he dropped just came out today? Ooh, yeah. very nice, very nice, yeah. um, very nice. That boy's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get uh, it. Jesus, <laughs> it, anyway. the dude's good. He's mm-hmm. he's he's better than he's better than most. He is better than most. I mean, that's just what it is. <laughs> so our very own Tafari ITV stated that. Over at the Fortnite maker Epic Games has laid off 830 employees. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and as they, as you say, Lady Mandalore, where is the money? Like <laughs> I'm I'm just saying, like, I I get why they got laid off. If they didn't see it coming, they weren't paying attention. Like, all you have you literally have just that one game in Epic Games, and it's full of microtransactions. Name one other game. In the last five years, that y'all is looking to play from Epic Games, one. Well, even if it's bad, tell me one. I was gonna say Gears of War, but they're by the owned by the Coalition now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how old is that game anyway? No, 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 no. We, we won't talk about Gears of War. It's a nice place. Okay. So no, no. Okay. <laughs> because. We have the latest one that's about a couple years war, and I agree with Black Spartan. Yes, Gears of War is. But, but, to, add, but to add to Kira's point, though, because we talked about this in the chat, I said it's amazing that Epic is a thirty-one billion dollar evaluated company, but they only report in the last quarter losing twelve million. But somehow you have to lose eight hundred plus employees. The math, as as Kira said so eloquently, the math ain't math. This this ain't black math. This ain't this ain't black math. This, <laughs> this is, it ain't had enough. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Trying to make like, a dollar out of fifteen cents. It ain't that ain't how this works over here. Yeah, and and we've talked about this before about these microtransactions and and the way they're giving out games and these daggone DLCs. <laughs> you gonna nickel and dime to death. Nickel and dime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have microtransactions at their workplace. Like if you if you if you want to use the toilet, that's fifty cents. Or if you want to fill a paper, that's fifty cents. Not the pay toilet. Pay toilet. Wash your hands. Keep keep fucking around. And um, is, no, no. And here's the thing. Why is this? It's funny he said that because out in California, there's literally a company that said it's they're like. Oh, they don't like using some of the public toilets because they're not clean. So now they're doing like air and Airbnb for personal bathrooms. No lie. And what? and I'm staying at the TV like, yeah, this world is doomed. Uh <laughs> hey, you know what? There's no such thing as you cannot invent a hustle. <laughs> pay no such thing as not invent a hustle anymore. That don't mean no. <laughs> Okay. And lit and, and the woman was a straight face about the whole thing, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me! I'm like, <laughs> a B, how do you B and B for a private bathroom? That that, you know what? I don't want to know. 
Yeah. Let me tell you how much we do not let people come in off the streets and in, into my job, <laughs> where we absolutely not letting you in my not to get comfortable and put a foot up. No, absolutely not. Not put a foot up. Not, not, not that relaxed yeah, position. Once they have like... Chipotle or Taco Bell, it's over for you. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, nah, fam, that ain't gonna yeah. get it. Um, you need to go home, sir. Go home to your, go home to your own spot, and you pull that up. Facts. We, we, you ain't gonna do a drive by here and have us going for all the Febreze and Fabuloso we can find. Right. And that's so only Kevin, lucky just, it's just Febreze. So see now, Kevin. I'm not sure if you were a gamer, you know, in your youth or not, but I know that a lot has changed, and it's not for the. In my opinion, it's not for the better. Not all of it. Not all of it. Uh, you you give us good content. You give us once again. We're back to content. You give us good content, but then you, you turn around and you say we're going to charge you seventy dollars for a game that you can download. I'm sorry. Oof. I I came to get a disc it's to put in my system. You got me paying seventy dollars for ones and zeros, and I don't even get to hold the damn thing in my hand. And it's seventy dollars to send me a code. Welcome to Greece. You know, I don't even get to. I don't even get to commit a carbon footprint with with my <laughs> DVD when I throw it out. When I'm done with it, I would at least like to. I I'll just say it once, it. and I'll say it again. <clears throat> the whole idea is to kill console gaming as we know it. The problem is, there's too many of us out there that still want to go into a GameStop and get a disc. Until I hate to say it, until that generation of us uh, expires, expires. <laughs> it is it is always going to be. Oh, but you can download it, but it's the same price as if I walk into GameStop and get annoyed and get a disc. Mm. Mm. It should be che- it, it should be cheaper. Like I'm I'm cool with losing yeah. the big ass console. I need a spot to put more Funko Pops. I'm cool with losing a console, <laughs> but I am not. Paying seventy dollars for something I can't physically hold in my hands. That's that's shameless plug. Shameless plug for Will. I expect. I, I'm waiting for my Funkos in November. Will, don't think I forgot. Um, I just want to. Make- they all they marked up. Yeah, you know I mean I on bet. the back, on the pops. I bet. We good. We good. I bet. I bet. <laughs> but not to digress. Um, yeah, no, it doesn't. It. I, I understand that the effort to make the games is still there, but you're taking away the fa- th- you're taking away a part of the production. You're making it more streamlined. So why is it cost seventy dollars for this game? Tell me. That's that's all I want. I just I just if you can make it's it a, make sense to me, yeah, I'll I'll accept it. But right now, it's a weekend. <laughs> it's It's a weekend. <laughs> I can't believe they're actually pulling this. I'm like, when I when I see people do it, and they, I'm like, y'all actually let them get away with that? Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. I don't. I don't want to pay his money, and then you give me an empty case. That's I'm flipping problem. everything over. You don't get you don't get the you don't get the instruction <laughs> booklet that you actually read from end to end with beautiful artwork and all that stuff. We used to look forward to that. I mean, hell, I didn't I, think I, they I, even made those anymore. No, I didn't know that either. Baby, baby. Hi, guys. I'm so sorry. I was selling comic books and helping old ladies across the street, but I ended up helping an old lady buy comic books. So it worked out. So I thought you were totally different. I'm glad you didn't go left. (laughs) (laughs) I disappointed you. I'm so sorry. That's another. That's another. You think he was going to stay, Lady? Either sell a comic book or help an old lady. So I chose sell comic books. No, I thought he was going to help old ladies. No, no, that's all. Oh, so you better yeah. stop now. Oh, look, why'd you even say the whole sentence? You said the whole Mark, sentence. Mark Cooper says agreed, and the workers aren't getting paid more for less physical copies either. Pretty it's much. true. The, the instruction booklet was the first to die. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> yes, it was. In so it many was. ways. <laughs> it's it's crazy that this is what we have to. I don't know in what world that they, they said. They will. This will be okay with them. No, it's not. Maybe for a newer generation, yes. But for ones who are like hardcore gamers, been there from the giddy up. Like, no, where's my? Where I'm coming home, Bob. Yo, y'all don't make. Y'all still make the cases the same. Where's the disc? 
<laughs> why do you think, I'm, why do you think we're mad at the Fortnite generation? What do they, what do they pretty much say? Hey, download this and immediately start playing. Right. No, I still got my yeah. Kingdom Not- Hearts 1 and 2 and booklets mm-hmm. and all that. I love mm-hmm. collecting it. I keep them. But these kids don't know that. All these kids know these days is skins. It is skins and mm. concerts that you can watch while you're playing game. That's it. That's great. You know how we got it. You know how we got our skins through hard work and diligence. Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and cheat codes. Yo, <laughs> can we talk about how game facts helped a lot of people navigate some seriously rough parts of the games? Yo, game facts was that was my uh my secret of mana. That was that was my uh, phone a friend for secret of mana because I could navigate the game for nothing without it. So hey, what if my articles are still there? Man, that makes me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, baby. Thanks, baby, for making me feel old just now. Because I'm supposed to post on there a lot. Look, here in Cleveland, uh, this past weekend, actually, they had the Cleveland Gaming Classic. Mm-hmm. Shameless. So I'm, I'm giving them a free shout out. That's cool. Um, and at this at this convention, they have <laughs> pinball games, old school arcade games, all the console games. When I say I sat down with my son. And what were we, we were playing Crazy Taxi. Nice. Me and him was playing Crazy Taxi. Jesus. Yeah. That game. I cool. was just like, yo, I was like, I ain't played this one in a while. And I look over and I'm like, is that a Commodore 64? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and it works. How? How? Nice. <laughs> That's a well kept machine. I mean, do they have an Atari 2600? They did. Did they have that a my first console? <laughs> they did. That is a, did they, have a they had a Coleco. The only one I didn't see working because they didn't have the controller to it was a GameCube. They had the GameCube locked up in a in a box. Oh, that's the with no controller. I was like, I, I don't know what happened, but y'all like this. All the other systems were like strapped down. Like this one was locked in the box. <laughs> you are going nowhere. It sounds like <laughs> Magfest. <laughs> Everything's in a cage. All the game systems are in cages. Yo, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was not it was, it was, boss. Christy, yeah. stop. Boss for the win. <laughs> she, she made my yep, boss for the win. Yep. She was the master oh, prize but, but Mark, yeah, Mark, I was gonna say Mark's got a he you, he's, he's got a good point. Go ahead, read it. But um, it says, here's the thing with the, Mark Cooper. Uh, here's the thing with the digital age, it's their temporary solution to game pirating because it's so much easier to modify the experience of the game. It sucks, but it's a way to try to combat these people cheating to create an advantage. I have a counter argument. As you would, I have, I'm, I have not a counter. I'm not I'm mm-hmm. not disappointed. <laughs> what you got? Your what counter you got? argument is, is, is going to be an agreeable thing. I, I do. I, I agree with Mark. He's 100% right with the pirating. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, however, comma. But, <laughs> but I also don't have to worry about my my game glitching the hell out when I put my disc in my, my <coughs> machine. That I have a come full on now. and complete game. That part. That's it. And, and the yeah. pirate's gonna pirate. Just just what it is. What, mm-hmm. It's what it is. Hell, yeah. you're talking. <laughs> you're listening to a crew of pirates right now. Uh, you know <laughs> what are you what are you talking about, sir? I have never in my entire life. Look, pirated they don't anything. they don't know what we've done. <sighs> I'll go ahead and okay. say if them eyeballs you, get any bigger, your whole forehead's sir, gonna disappear. Stop it. Stop I, it. There. I, I would it. never in my life. I, I appreciate would, all the efforts that the people put their work into. And my just because my job doesn't it. afford me to spend seventy dollars every two to three days on a brand new insert thing here. Um no. Pause. Um, <laughs> okay, well, we'll be watching. Let's go. Good night, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I was just. It doesn't, it okay. doesn't mean I didn't appreciate them. Sorry. Was, Pardon me. Uh, Sister Mary Clarence would not appreciate uh, calling me a. <laughs> <laughs> Not Sister Mary. Oh, Look, we, we, oh, when Blue Raider Rider was came out, we knew it was over. So that, but yeah, it's, it's, we've been seeing the fold of a lot of these bigger game companies like in the past what, three years. You wouldn't think Blizzard. that it would come. Mm. Yeah, Blizzard, mm. Blizzard. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh. wow, sorry. Boy, the fire still Besides hasn't gone out with that. Caught in my throat. My apologies. Yeah. I'm so sorry. The yeah. fire still hasn't gone out with that one, but it's. <laughs> 
it's I'm like, yo, don't the minute you say you hear Blizzard in the news, you'd be like, Jesus Christ, what they do this time. Like, uh, the system that the, the company is will it stop? stop? That's all that's just all you said. Like, will it stop? Will it ever stop? Could be worse. Uh, electronic arts. Oh god. Ooh, yeah. EA. Oh wow. That's EA, a bad EA, point. That was a bad EA, point. For regular EA. <laughs> they, they were talking about EA Sports was a bag fumble. Good mm -hmm. Lord of mercy, that was a bad fumble. Anyway, uh <laughs> We caught up with a show that has one of our favorite people as executive producers, and that's Carl Jones. Mm -hmm. Friend of the show, Carl Jones. Yes. Shout out to the, <laughs> to the love. Shout out to the Joneses family. Uh, Young Love has been premiered on Max, and it's based off of Matthew Cherry's book, uh, Hair Love. And friend of my Twitter, Matthew A. Cherry. Shameless plug. <laughs> so, but it, this is this is one of these shows where you know, as we were speaking earlier, Kevin, about seeing representation, seeing us, and seeing yeah. different forms of us in all forms of media. This is just fun to watch when you see shows like this, shows like Craig of the Creek, and mm. then uh, and then seeing the spinoff Jessica's World. You know, it is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. You know, when you see yeah. these type of characters on screen, even the television show Saturdays that was on Disney Plus you know, produced by uh, Marcy Martin, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when you see shows like that, that represent young black girls and young black men, it's refreshing. And to see this family yeah, that has a great voice cast, by the way, you know, very subtle, not over the top, you know, and the, and the stuff they're talking about, and it's just, it's lighthearted, but it's mentioning things, it's talking about things, like it's a Ray. I love some Issa Rae. Like everything this woman is doing, I'm just like, sign me up. I I don't care. It's she because she's rooting for everyone black anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> seeing one of these things, and I'm gonna do the round table. Uh, Lady Mandalore, what was your thoughts off of Young Love from the episodes we've seen so far? It is. It is adorable. Um, it gets the message across without being, what is it? Is it ham-fisted? I think is the phrase I want to use. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, they miss Loretta Devine should never have left our eardrums and, or our, <laughs> our visions. I love Miss Grandma Mama forever and ever. I love her. Um, oh, and that little girl, uh, Monroe. Brooke, uh, Brooke, Monroe. Brooke, 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 Brooke Conway. Monroe. Yeah, yes. Brooke Monroe Conway. She's. A, I like her. I like her. She's sassy. <laughs> <laughs> She's sassy. She pulls it, she, and she she pulls off. She pulls it off while still maintaining her innocence. Like I can see her saying some wild stuff. Small children. Um, it's wild stuff. <laughs> um, in real life. <laughs> um, but the, the sh it's drawn well. The story flows. There's not too many tangents. Um. And you know, and it's it's got multiple, it's kind of got multiple storylines, but it it brings everything back together. Yeah, because it's just about a, it's it's really about a young couple with their daughter and her, their family and them just living. Yeah, you know. So who are and, uh, and, and showing their indiv their individual lives in yes. this family, like it's it's very it's it's real good. It's good watching watching. <laughs> Watching Angela's Angela's run, which is played by Issa Rae, just watching her story, her storyline alone, I'm just like, oh, they're yeah. doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm I'm good yeah. with this. I'm good with this because yeah. you're seeing the aftermath of something, and you're just like, oh wow, like they're tackling it, and I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm here for that. Uh, who else seen it? Who got next? Did Wilson. Oh, yeah. you said. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear <laughs> prompt buzz. Oh, I was waiting on you to call somebody out. I'll go. Oh. <laughs> Since we're here, real quick side story. Um, one of my frat brothers, his mother sounds so much like Loretta Devine that I was helping him move one time, and I heard his mom like in the distance in the kitchen, and I wanted to fight him because I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Don't surprise me with Loretta Devine." That's not cool. Like, if your mom is Loretta Devine, we should have had this conversation a long time ago. Oh, <laughs> um, wasn't oh, her. Wow. Remarkably like her. It's crazy. I love this project. 
its evolution is insane. Wasn't it just like a children's book? And then that book became a short and that short won Oscar. And now we are here. Yeah. Like this, yeah. the power of a small idea and in, in wanting to tell your story and making sure that your specific niche, your specific ideas get heard by the audience that you want to hear it. And it just evolves and evolves and evolves. And now it's this amazing thing that's touching so many households, so many families. I love it. So, so far, I said it best. That line. That line. That line. <laughs> Jesus. I'm like, oh, word. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was until I was like, yo, even the whole salon stopped. I'm like, yeah, that, that, that was totally <laughs> cut. Mm. So I I do enjoy what they're bringing to the table. Um, and having them is well drawn, it's not overdone, it's funny, it is very real, you know, in 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 it's in the way it's built. And they they really got something on their hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It really got something on their hands. I mean, once again, this goes back to us being seen, you know, and yeah. having and tackling some of these issues. Like Tafari I had mentioned, that's one of the issues <laughs> that they're that they're ta- is the aftermath of this. And then seeing mm-hmm. Angela, like, I have a list of things that I wanted to do after I got better. Although I or would before not before I got sick, or I was, yeah, or before I got sick, you know, and. And, and seeing and seeing Steven, you know, be this struggling uh, producer, you know, and I'm just like, and I, I, you know, just watching that whole thing. And he's like, he's got some dope beats, but the person that he's trying to get to buy the beats is a trash artist anyway. <laughs> and so, you know, at least, you know, and we see a lot of that in music today. Yeah, I'm coming for y'all. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Do better. I, I am from an age of hip hop that will tear you to shreds. That actually had talent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The artist with no bars always had money. I promise you. And, <laughs> uh, Especially you like this. I really. I. Who? But I need likes. Ooh. Okay. I guess. Because so. it's all about the hook now. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not even the hook no more. It's just whatever TikTok dance you can do to it. That too. Oh my God. Man. Yeah. So, or whatever right. challenge you can come up with that's just as stupid as the last one. Right. See, this, yeah. is why, this, is why to drive. this is why I just learned to have the radio off when I'm driving now. It's rather watch. I listen to the road. I still listen to the roots. What are you talking about? I don't... <laughs> <laughs> right, you well, actually, I got to listen to Bluey, but that's a whole other story. Uh... <laughs> 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 so, uh-uh, uh, yes. uh-uh, not all of y'all doing it. <laughs> listen, uh-uh. listen. I, I uh-uh. wait, have you watched I movie? No. Wait, wait a watch minute. Movie? I need to understand. No, okay, so y'all already this... got me with the one piece. I'm not to, doing blue. Hey, it's actually Blue's what I would have okay. said for this that Bluey and actually Young Love have a way of appealing to the kids and adults at the same time. Talk about it, like, oh my god, I'm go to your room. What is going on? I'm like, yo, they are dropping bars. so much knowledge and bars to these bars. kids. Mm-hmm. And now I'm gonna shift it to what we're talking about and see like how my daughter just comes alive watching it, mm-hmm. seeing like kind of herself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that is just as a parent, that is mm-hmm. priceless. And then as a parent of thinking like Yo, I didn't have that shit. I had Susie. That was it. Susie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I didn't even have Susie until I was 12 or 13 yeah. years old. Before that, yeah, it was right. nothing. So Look, I have I have a, a you know, I have a five-year-old, he's soon to be six, to say, I know why you call me Padawan. And my son says, Yeah, he was watching Young Jedi Adventures. And I'm like, soon. Soon. <laughs> I, I definitely have her watching that too. And she's like kind of on on the- <laughs> There goes Spartan and Obi I, like, wait, I mean, what? Bruh. <laughs> he, he he'll pop up when he hears Obi. He's I'm like when he hears Obi now, and it's kind of funny. We were what I was just watching, I was just watching Duel of Fates. That scene comes up, and he hears Obi, he pops up right out of his chair, like, who called me? 
I'm proud. That's a proud moment. Like you yes. know, you know, you know, you know I have a calling, Father, and <laughs> I shall come to his aid. <laughs> but no, young love is definitely. I, I do. I do big on young love because again, like like Lady pointed out, it's representation. It's mm-hmm. it's ours. It's our story. It's our representation. It's told in the style that we know and love. So we immediately gravitate toward it. So I, I mean, I just sat there and watched it by myself. I was supposed to be watching it with the wife, but she never came back home in time. So I guess I'll be watching it twice. Yes, uh, you always, you always keep the one, the first one quiet. You never say. Oh, <laughs> she, she's not listening right now. At least I don't think. <laughs> you underestimate her power. No. Wow, <laughs> every day. You are still a fledgling young trouble. man. Don't worry, your time will come. Did I, did I just do a reference of Star Wars without? Yes. Just yes, inadver- it's ingrained. Yes, Lady yeah. Mandalore knows it's ingrained. <laughs> it, it's it's gonna it's gonna happen. Let let the force flow through you. I, I would never stop. <laughs> Wait, pause. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're getting out of here. Uh, we want to thank our guests, Kevin Murphy of Blur Station and KDS Entertainment. Go check him out. Go check us out. Go to blurstation.com. Let me pull that up right quick. Go to blurstation.com. Go sign up. Get you some. Get you some of this. Yes. Get you some of this, please. Yes. Show your love, and and trust me, you're going to see the dividends. You're going to see the payback from it because you're seeing content that's done by people that look like you, that represent you, that stand for what you say. So let people understand. Let people tell the people where they can find you. Absolutely. Uh... Again, you can reach me at, uh, let's see, you can go to Blurred Station, and when you sign up, of course, I'll see you, I'll see you come in there, so I'll probably say hello. <laughs> uh, um, you can reach me at uh, KDS Entertainment, so it's uh, Kevin M at KDSEntertainment.com. Send me, you know, send me something. Send me mm-hmm. some stuff. So you can, uh, so kdsetv.com, just put KDS Entertainment in, and you'll be able to see, get a look at some of our, uh, our partners and the work that we're doing and the shows, some of the show entertainment and stuff like that that we're doing right now that we can show. Um, but we're focused 100% on Blur Station, and we just got to get this thing done. We got to get folk on board. Come on board with us, jump in the water. Let's make this thing work. You're gonna have a blast, ah, uh, Lady Mandalore. Talk to the people. Well, hello, good evening. How is everybody doing? <laughs> um, Why do you always act so surprised? You're the, you're the you're the second in command. I don't know. I always expected you were to get voted into that up. position. Accepted. I mean, pretty much. <laughs> you're the executive officer in charge. Feels uh-huh. like nepotism, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll on, accept it. On, like, yeah, she's so sad. <laughs> um, y'all can find me right here on Blurred's Eye View. Um, I have my own podcast that I run live on Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, this week I'll be having a lovely uh, new fledgling director uh, by the name of Joshua Cryer, also known as Joshua the Guy. He's a, he's a sweetheart. I love him. Um, you can also find me on on the <laughs> you can find me on the TikToks um, as Child of Mandalore, and I do a little bit of voice acting on there. And Child of Mandalore is also the name of a podcast that I have on all of the whatever podcasts you can find me on, um, where I talk about the history of Mandalore. Uh, that's it. That's that's, um, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's a, that's it. <laughs> Talk to him, lady. Wait, what you got? Wait, wait, wait. What you got? Um, 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 I have seen some behind the scenes shots of the stuff that's coming out of Blurred Station, and I've read things. And you know, for y'all that are new, that are new here, I also go by Story Whore. Um, I will do anything for good story. And I'm gonna tell you right now. I apologize. I'm busting wide open for these stories that they got coming out. I'm just saying. It's real good. Look here. Uh, <laughs> they got that, good that, stuff coming that, up all the way that, out. That one we read. What's coming all the way out? What? Pause. All of it. All of it. All of it coming out. All of it. All the stops. All the stops. All of it. Yes. Lord, Lord. Talk to him, lady. Hmm. 
What's up, everybody? I am Lainey Geek by Heart. I am one What's half going? Geek by Heart. Oh, speaking of which, that's one of the people, Jarrell Patton. How how you doing, Jarrell? He is the one who's written uh, the Undead Horizon. That's yes. one of the projects that's coming out. Uh, uh, Jarrell, we're gonna have you on the show. Really? That sure. sounds like something I need to read. <laughs> Let's go. That was perfect, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Um, Divine yes, intervention. <laughs> Listen, that part. Um, I am Lainey. I am one half of Geek by Heart. Me and my husband run our YouTube channel by Geek by Heart. Look us up. We talk about a lot of trailers and we talk about a lot of horror stuff. Um, I am looking forward to seeing Saw this weekend. I think he's going to be seeing it, so we should be covering it on our um, channel this weekend as well. Um, mm -hmm. You can find us at TikTok. You can find us at IG. Um, you can find Jay, where he is now streaming um, every weekend, God of War um, 2018. He's about to end that and then go into Ragnarok. So if you want to refresh your Ragnarok, join us for the stream. We stream on Friday, or he streams on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Um, times vary, but we're trying to lock that down. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, and um, I have come, come, come have a good time. That's what we do over here. That's all we do over here. Who? Yeah, uh, uh, maybe. Oh, really? talk to the papules. Really? I come out of nowhere. Yeah. It's like I was, I was late. I'm sorry. I had what? stuff to do. And, it's called you know, life. We know what it is. <laughs> you know, I've still got more things to do. But anyway, ladies, I told you, you like you like Shepherd Book. It's just we just come by the planet, stop by, talk to us. You give a couple words and. You don't tell us what you really do. Uh <laughs> I want some permanence in my life, okay? Can I have that, please? <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and blurs of all ages, it is your Frosty Bearded Blurred Corn once again. Sorry I'm late, but I had things to do. But you can find me on Instagram. The combos are coming back. I've got one scheduled for next week. I never, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but let's just say <laughs> you definitely want to be part of that combo. Mm -hmm. Um. You can find me on Instagram and X under Navy Montel. You can find me on YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok under Rogue Catnip. I've got more videos coming out. i got more things coming up. And Blur Station's got me so excited. If y'all are not on board by now, this is a reason to be excited because this platform is going to bring something magnificent that is long overdue. Sell it! So please stop giving your money to Sell people it. who don't worry about your representation. <laughs> Go to where representation matters. Go where you can be seen, where the melanation is more powerful than any kryptonite ever made in any comic whatsoever. So come on over. Let's go. Sell it. Mm -hmm. Celebration. Right, Kevin, you, you already knew. You saw my videos. You already know how I am, bro. You I, see it. I see it. I see it. Ah, talk to him, Will. Yes. The cinematic it's, uh, assassin. I <laughs> the cinematic assassin, the frugal Funko finder, uh, Baltimore's box office bully, all of them things. Uh, you can find me at uh, purefandom.com talking about uh, trailers, and I'm going to be reviewing Gen V there. You can find me at blurseyeview.org, where I'm going to be talking about Loki season two. You can find me at Mayhem Media on all the social sites i do various things on different places you can you if you find my twitter you can find me being really upset about damien <laughs> lord have and, mercy we still ain't here um <laughs> you can also find me on facebook holding it down for bluey all my bandits out there oh just trying to be gosh. good <laughs> See, and you thought the One Piece crew was something. I don't know what the deal is with this Bluey. Bluey can be God, cold, it's, it's different. But we got a thousand Blue, different. It's a lot lower investment to get in. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I agree with that. That's the selling point. <laughs> it's a lot lower. <laughs> that's a I mean, you, question you, you understand. Okay. I agree with that. I ain't gonna lie. No, um, I mean, also, my ovaries don't work like that. Uh, <laughs> yep, right. Yep, drill right. Yep. Exactly. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Listen, it's highly know, addictive for no reason at all. Listen to the good people out there. But um, you can also find me on Blur Station as an affiliate member. So if you like the foolishness that I do, or you want to find where to get all the great deals on pops, I'll let you boy. Um. <laughs> But outside of that, I always like to stress um, that mental health is important. If you can't tell. I have a screw loose. I keep it tightened, though. So be sure to uh, take your meds 
And uh, if you have it, take that PTO because self-care is important as well. And whatever else you do in this world, lean into laughter, lean into learning, lean into love, and we will make this world a better place. So reading rainbow. I stumbled. Reading or I stumbled. Rainbow. <laughs> no. Kira did not disappoint me at all. <laughs> <laughs> So I stumped I stumped Spartan at the beginning oh, of the show, and, and the assassin got him at the end. It was <laughs> a group effort. The Kira started to break out. Into, I can go twice as high. She started to do that. Butterfly <laughs> in the sky. I, I can go twice as high. Take a look. It's in a book. It's in a book. Reading rainbow. Oh. <laughs> I'm about to say we can harmonize. Let's go. Look, look, wait, oh no, wait. Oh, the look oh Obi gave me. The, the look Obi oh, looked at me like that. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no distant relatives. Anyway, uh, Black Spartan, where you can find me, uh, Black Spark four four seven, all the socials. I usually do reviews on everything that I read, watch, and play, and sometimes some gym stuff because I do a couple push ups. Uh, I do a little podcast of my own. Of course, my daily political podcast, How the Frack We Got Here, um, every Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, my video game podcast called Get Bit every Friday. Both can be found on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Um, wherever podcasts can be heard or seen is pretty much where you can find me. I am also one of the many heads of the Blurred's Eye.U, uh, Blurred's Eye View.org writing team. I actually cover wrestling. Why? Because wrestling is real and people are fake. And like all of us, we're still waiting for the Jade, Cargill, and Bianca Belair match to happen, but we know how Vincent Man feels about uh, black women. Yes, I said it. Um, Jade, that all- we'll players. I'm just saying, you, we know how a white man feels about strong black women. But anyway, um, <laughs> that also being said, guys, uh, again, like we, we keep on saying this all the time, representation matters. Much like Blur Station, as we have been saying all night, um, get in on it while you can, especially on the equity board. I am one of the many people, along with this panel, that believes in ownership. At this point, we don't own BET. We don't own anything outside of the movies that are on Tubi that just seem to still be playing. We would like to be able to actually own something, be a part of something, be able to represent something. And Blur Station is definitely... Preach, brother. Preach. At the same time, as Lenny said already, you can still get a Big Mac after that. So I don't know about you, but who do you run your pockets? But if Blur is right, you can enjoy us and still go eat. That's what sounds like a hell of a deal to me. Um, but aside from Blur Station, anybody else that's doing something new, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a con, word of mouth is still the greatest tool that we have at our disposal as a people. Please do not just go by and just wave at it. Like it. Share it. Even if you don't like it, just share it anyway. Because it's the one thing as a people we don't do. Whether or not you like it or not, just share it. Because you don't know if someone else may like something that you shared and you may help out that person in the long run. Because again, because damn it, we need unity. Um, aside from that, really quickly, uh, we are still in the middle of con season, which means I have three simple rules. Rule number one, respect the cosplayer at all times. Because they usually get a guy like me to throw you out. I have fun with that. And I will, because like, I'm still waiting for the video to come back of me throwing somebody in the back of a pickup truck in Nashville. I'm still waiting for that video. But again, um, number two, again, guys, uh, soap and water and deodorant are still all cheap. Please wash your ass before you go into one of these cons. <laughs> you don't need to go in there smelling like expired beer and regrets. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and the other two rules I have, uh, again, it's the same rule I have for myself as being at these cons. Simply put, be polite, be kind, don't be a dick, and we'll all be cool. Reach. Mm-hmm. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> Church finger. Uh, <laughs> Pause. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I am the captain of the ship, the man on the wall, Chris Fury. Thank you for tuning in to Blurred's Eye View. If you like what you're seeing, head over to the YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Show your love on IG. Boom. By giving us a follow. You can follow the I you go to IG, follow us there. Link tree in the bio, because guess what's in the link tree? Everywhere you can find us, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Blurred Station, and so much more. 
Uh, you want to show your love. We are a proud affiliate of Blur Station. You are a proud affiliate of Otaku Noir. We, I will be doing my unboxing uh, this weekend. Uh, and and happy early birthday to our very own Grill of Horror. Keep my heart, lady. Oh, really, oh, really? I ain't even got mine yet. Really, Kara? That's how we're going to just, just, just... <laughs> Whoa, so, oh, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Look at nice that. It's a throwing. nice box. I've been totally thrown out of. Okay. All right. Okay. We love you, Navy. <laughs> You're going to get yours. <laughs> it's, it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> That's what my ex wife said. Look how it all <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> even Kevin's yeah. like, wait, oh, you wow. see where I do it, right, Ted? You see where I do it, right? Okay. Oh, oh, As he talks to the blue beetle on the long dick, but you know, it's all good. Lady, on that note, tune in with us next Tuesday and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, remember to educate yourself and others, entertain yourself and others, and most of all, encourage yourself and others. Thank you to the squad, one of the dopest crews ever. Thank you to Kevin Murphy from Blur Station and KDS Entertainment. Go over there, join up. We're there, we're here for you. Be there for us. Until then, we will see you later. Bye.